Welcome back to the Smugsy Show. I'm Smugsy, your host. Every Wednesday we meet here to talk about important things and important people. This week we're going to talk about some important discoveries I made on my journey out west. Beginning on June 20th, I flew over 3,000 miles by plane, traveled over 2,500 miles by car, and hiked, walked, ran 60 or 70 miles on foot to discover something. And I did, and that's what I'm going to share with you on today's show. Let's begin where my trip began. A couple of weeks ago, a 2.52 p.m. direct flight from Portland, Maine to Minneapolis, St. Paul on Delta. 300 bucks for the ticket, $30 to check the bag. We landed in Minneapolis, Minnesota around 5, the city where, of course, George Floyd was killed and Derek Chauvin was convicted of his murder. And the place was somber, weighed down by the sadness of the events that had transpired and also by the cement barriers and chain-linked fences that still surround so much of the city of Minnesota. We stayed at the Rand Tower Hotel, which is a brand new Art Deco hotel in an historic building that has lovely furnishings and a bar, the Whiskey Sour, that we entered immediately and found to our delight an Ethiopian bartender who was beautiful and moved gracefully and made excellent vodka martinis while offering interesting and useful information about world affairs and scotch and things going on in Minnesota. Um, She was a beautiful woman. Um, We talked about her journey to America as a college student in Iowa, Um, the traditions of offering a full bottle of scotch back home, of course, the George Floyd trial, and injera, which is the bread that she loves and eats and reminds her of home. Um, her voice was mesmerizing after a year of COVID seclusion and, you know, probably the martini. The pleasant, understated bartender is particularly memorable because she was in contrast to the only other person in the bar, um, the cocktail waitress um, at the whiskey and soda. Um, th- this there was one couple in the corner looked like they had been nursing those drinks for a couple of weeks, but really the only person in our range was this cocktail waitress, a gun, a chubby gun, sm- a chubby gum smacking chatterbox who looks like she had been nursing a dairy cow, maybe until up until the age of fifteen. Uh, she couldn't she couldn't shut up and she paid no mind to the unspoken hierarchy of a restaurant and bar, and that is that the bartender is in charge of chatting up the bar patrons. Um, Not her. Um, Pigtails, translucent skin, scared to death, Uh, really an idiot. Basically, she told us to go to a coffee shop that we tried to go to, but discovered it was closed and had been closed since March. But she also, um, in addition to butting in and interrupting, adding her two cents, She did mention Young Joni, a restaurant that we confirmed with our seductive bartender was the place to go, and so that's where we went. Young Joni, um, kind of a groovy restaurant in northeast Minneapolis, the winner of a James Beard Award, celebrity chef and fellow English major, Anne Kim. Um, We had, you know, pizza and salad. We had our first pizza and salad of the trip. The salad we got was the bibim grain, and unless you like like a sour fermented vegetables mashed with egg, um, it's you might not like. It. I it was a little sour for me, but the old reliable pizza was was decent, and the photo booth was fun. You get a ticket to go into an old fashioned photo booth and print out the photos and stick them on the wall and feel like you're part of something cool. The room was comfortable at the Rand Tower Hotel in downtown Minneapolis. The next morning, we couldn't find coffee anywhere. We jumped in the car, finally, and made our way 235 miles to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which 
was a pleasant surprise. Sioux Falls, South Dakota, um, the Big Sioux River, uh, home to Big Falls Park. Um, another contrast, while Minneapolis gently weeps, Sioux Falls, South Dakota rocks. Uh, lots of art and sky. Who would have thought that I could get a locally grown asparagus sandwich with rhubarb, agrodolce, smoked blue blue cheese ranch dressing, and arugula on naan um, in Sioux Falls, but I did, and I loved it. Uh, The Hotel Philip, where we stayed, beautiful refurbished hotel, a little bit small, but lovely fluffy robes. We had a nice view of the city, had a picnic along the park, sliding bathroom doors I don't like, so other than that, Sioux Falls was great. We did hit Walmart on the way out of the town, which was a little bit of a buzzkill, but we did score the f- the last cooler and stocked up a couple hundred bucks of drinks and snacks, water, Gatorade, wine, beer, V8, you name it, we got it. Um, threw them in the back of our Volkswagen Atlas at three rows of seats we folded down the last row and just had a kind of an area for all our gear and hopped on route 90 where we were making our way to rapid city but of course we took the road to the badlands national park um kind of like the land of the lost it's almost like the outer lands on lion king you know where the hyenas and bad lions live but except the badlands is good it's it's a beautiful beautiful national park unbelievably stunning stone mountains and structures and layers of color and animals, bighorn sheep, just to almost feel like you're in a prehistoric thriller. Um, And some good news for climate hysterics. Badlands, which now looks like a prehistoric barren wasteland in some respects but it's beautiful used to be a sea when the earth was warmer it's gotten colder so that's interesting heading out of badlands you can't not go to wall drug it's a tourist mecca in a small town of wall south dakota that has a brilliant marketing scheme of littering the landscape with cute charm you know kind of um kitschy but fun signs directing you to wall drug where you can get free ice water there's so many signs i mean you there's so many signs um it's so corny it's it's cool we found our way after seeing wall drug to rapid city and the hotel alex johnson which were remarkable for all the famous people who have stayed there presidents Eisenhower, uh, Roosevelt, Reagan, Nixon, Ford, Margaret Thatcher, Sandra Day O'Connor, Garth Brooks, Ozzy Osbourne, Elton John, Viggo Mortensen, uh, Jane Fonda, Cary Grant, Bobby Kennedy, Joan Rivers, Jimmy Stewart, Alfred Hitchcock, and now, yours truly, Smugsy Girl. Um... The question is why? Why do so many people stay there? And because it's it's a dump. But I guess it's the nicest dump in town in Rapid City. Rapid City, South Dakota, where there's statues of bronze men everywhere. All the presidents, statues of them. They're kind of short, but they're everywhere in town. Also, Rapid City, where I had the worst meal of my life at Que Pasa. You know, like, what's up? Well, definitely not the ratings since I've been there. Um... I should have ran when we opened the menu and half crusted, half gooey gobs of salsa were sticking the 25 page menus describing 175 combinations of the same five ingredients. Well, we didn't. Um, The icing on the cake was when the bus girl came by and heaved this big dirty bus bin on the table as we were eating and started taking the dishes away from us, including Mr. X's drink and then threw this dirty rag and started wiping slop up 
in front of us. Um, really, it, it's kind of a nightmare causing event almost on the trip. Um, but the next day, we got up early. The early bird catches the worm at Custer State Park, 71,000 acres of beautiful wilderness right outside Rapid City. Uh, we climbed up Little Devil's Tower. Then we're a little warm, changed into our suits, and dove into Sylvan Lake and did a nice swim, sat on the park bench and had a picnic as families streamed in. And when that place was teeming full, we got in our car and left to Mount Rushmore because in the afternoon is when there's not as much traffic, and there wasn't. And Mount Rushmore was surprisingly peaceful and majestic and free. You pay for parking. Walk through an entrance of all 50 states' flags and a lovely stone walkway that directs you to a new visitor center and the carvings of the bad the carvings of the Black Hills by sculptor um, Gutzon Borglum you know Gutzon Borglum a priggish asshole is what I concluded about him Um, but he did carve the Black Hills of South Dakota with Of course, the four famous images, George Washington, the first president, and of course he had been the general in the Continental Army during the Revolution. No brainer. Uh, And then there's um, Thomas Jefferson, who of course wrote the Declaration of Independence, was Secretary of State, was the third president, and kind of closed the deal on the Louisiana Purchase that doubled the size of the United States and gave birth to South Dakota. So it makes sense that Jefferson's on Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. Next to Jefferson is Theodore Roosevelt, the youngest man to be elected president, the guy who kind of did the Panama Canal, Theodore Roosevelt, and then finally Abraham Lincoln, the president of the Civil War, of course, and author of the Emancipation Proclamation and the Gettysburg Address. Um, No women, um, no women really anywhere in Mount Rushmore, National Park. Uh, I did ask, and Eleanor Roosevelt apparently is on the was on the board of trustees, and she suggested to Gudsman, the you know the idiot, um, not an idiot, but I guess he was just kind of a kind of an asshole, not an idiot, but an asshole. Um, and Gudsman refused Susan B. Anthony. So there's no women carved in stone um, at Mount Rushmore or cast in bronze in Rapid City, but there is dignity, a 50-foot statue of an indigenous woman who's at a rest area near the Missouri River that is divine and giant, and there is Governor Christy Nome, who's making her mark on politics, and I predict will be on a presidential ticket in your lifetime. You heard it here first on the Smugsy Show. In Rapid City, we... um, we had the bad meal, but then we had a good pizza and salad at the Independent Ale House. The next morning, we made our way to Bozeman, Montana. It was about 460 miles. Lovely, lovely ride. And what's to say about Bozeman other than that? I'm in love with Bozeman. It's a fun, quintessential western town with lots of recreation. We hiked in the highlight. Canyon Valley and had excellent pizza at Blackbird, Red Tractor. We had a great dinner at Aleworks. We stayed at the best Airbnb ever. It was a a walk-up loft that had a beautiful deck with a view of the mountains and brand new construction, high-end furnishing, plenty of space, lovely plush towels, nice bedding, kitchenware, very good quality, and the family, they were on vacation, so we had basically the place to ourselves where we entertained and relaxed in Bozeman for four days before leaving uh, on our way to West Yellowstone. But on our way to West Yellowstone, we swung through Big Sky and hiked the Beehive Basin, which is an amazing hike, very, very high up and had an incredibly scary mountain road, my right leg was sore from breaking and I wasn't driving. Uh, Great outdoors. Um, On the way, um, we took a spectacular route 
from Bozeman to West Yellowstone, Route 191, along the Gallatin River. And uh, big, big trucks, but we found ourselves at the 1872 Adults Exclusive Only Hotel in Yellowstone, the nicest place in town. Um, Diamond in the rough, you might say. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, just a stone's throw away from West Yellowstone. And did you know that Yellowstone, it's open 24 hours, so you can get up as early or as late as you want and go. We did. um, Now, the first night in West Yellowstone, I had my first bison burger cooked. Well done. I ate half of it. It was delicious. What I discovered about Yellowstone is that it's gassy. Who knew that Yellowstone National Park was gassy? Old Faithful, the geyser, well, that's just one of many geysers, which are these like prehistoric holes in the earth that molten comes up and steams water and causes steam and geysers to sometimes regularly, sometimes irregularly erupt and give a show. And these geysers are named and they're gassy and they're beautiful. The second night, we had dinner in Old West Yellowstone at um, a pizza place. It was delicious. The next day, up again at the crack of dawn, headed into Yellowstone National Park. This time, we headed towards the east entrance, which is where we were going to exit, and saw stunning natural beauty. Buffalo, rushing, gushing water, pristine lakes. It was just amazing. Um, We left the east entrance of Yellowstone National Park, went into Wyoming. Again, stunning, stunning natural scenery. Um, And to our surprise, came upon the Buffalo Bill Reservoir and Buffalo Bill State Park, where we picnicked, and then made our way to the Bighorn Mountains, Bighorn National Forest, 10,000 feet high. We were making our way to the Wyoming High Country Lodge. Rugged, friendly people with ATVs and guns um, and cowboy hats up 10,000 feet on our way, outnumbered by wild animals. Everybody carries a gun. They should. Um, Moose right in the lawn, right in the lawn, the medicine wheel. We hiked into Porcupine Falls where we found a family who was bringing an elderly gentleman down a difficult hike who had broken his arm and was surviving from a stroke and they didn't have any water so that was exciting Um, his daughter said well he had a stroke but that's not going to stop him but my money says it killed him after two days in the high country the bighorn mountains of Wyoming where we were up close and friendly with rugged people and wild animals and off the grid. Well, we hopped in our car and made our way 700 miles back to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where we stayed at a Holiday Inn Express and Suites. That was not bad, um, except that there was black pants that didn't belong to me in the room, which was a little bit weird. The next morning, we got up 430 hopped in our rental car and made our way back to the Minneapolis St. Paul airport where we gave the cooler that we couldn't carry on the plane to the chirp, a chipper young man who helped us return the rental. He said he had a son who goes to basketball practice who would appreciate the cooler, made it through security, almost got bumped, thought we were going to get bumped. I wasn't willing to take $500 to fly the LaGuardia LaGuardia on July 3rd, so the last minute jumped on the plane, smooth flight back to Portland, Maine. And here I am, back on the Smugsy Show with you. And what I learned most of all on my journey is that, contrary to what you might believe, America is beautiful. God bless America. And that's all for today's Smugsy Show. I hope you'll follow me on Twitter at Smugsy Girl, on Instagram at Smugsy Girl. And stay tuned for some new merch working with a designer. Soon we'll have something for everyone in a line that I hope you'll like. And until next time, this is Smugsy signing off. Take care.